Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. What's going on everyone? This is Aaron Hilliard with Mushroom Wonderland. Today we're going to be talking about the five easiest mushrooms that you can identify in the forest of the Pacific Northwest. We're going to start with number one, probably the most popular and most common sought out wild edible mushroom here in the Pacific Northwest is going to be the Golden Pacific Chanterelle. This is known as Cantharellus formosus. This grows in the autumn between September and November in the Pacific Northwest. It's gonna be grown in coniferous woods that are covered in moss on the ground. You're gonna see salal bushes and Oregon grape and red huckleberry, black huckleberry. These mushrooms have a mycorrhizal relationship with certain conifer trees like the Douglas fir and the spruce tree and the hemlock tree here in the Pacific Northwest. When you're out here looking for chanterelles, one thing to note is that they're bright orange. They get pretty easy to see. The margin or the edge of the cap of the mushroom is very wavy and irregular. They're often vase shaped and the gills on the outside are more like veins. They're called veined mushrooms. The veins on a chanterelle will often run all the way down to the base of the stipe. The stipe is the stem. The chanterelle has kind of a unique smell. Some people describe it to smell a little bit like apricots. I can kind of agree with that one. It's got a unique smell, but the two identifying features that you're really looking for is that that margin on it is really wavy that they shred apart a little bit like string cheese and that they have veins running down the stipe so regular gilled button mushrooms from the grocery store their gills all come in and then they stop at the exact spot where they meet the stipe chanterelle the veins run down the stem all the way down the stem so pacific golden chanterelle easy one to identify and you're finding it somewhere on the conifer forest floor between september and november in the pacific northwest you can almost bet that you found Cantharellus formosus or the golden Pacific chanterelle. The second most easily identifiable mushroom here in the woods of the Pacific Northwest that we're gonna look at today is called the oyster mushroom or Pleurotus ostreatus or Pleurotus species number seven or the Pleurotus pulmonarius. They're white to kind of a tan color to an almost gray color. They grow in stacks and rows on the trees and they also, they have gills underneath, but the gills are decurrent. They run down the length of the mushroom, pretty much to the base of it. There's one mushroom that these can be confused with, and that would be the angel wing, but that only grows on conifers here in the Pacific Northwest, and that only grows in the fall. And the oyster mushrooms that we find around here, typically growing on alder, are gonna be in the springtime. So, chanterelle in the fall, oysters in the spring. There are so many oysters growing right around the end of May, early June here in the Pacific Northwest. You can walk out into almost any forest and find some downed alder log somewhere near a, a, any kind of a water source, a wetland or a marshland. There's tons of alder growing around. The log has to have been dead for like two years before any mycorrhizal reaction is gonna happen within that log. And when it does fruit, then these clusters of oyster mushrooms grow on the outside of the bark. Are easy to find in grocery stores too. You could compare it to one that you find in a grocery store. They tear apart fairly easy. They're not very brittle. They're kind of rubbery. And uh, there's very few look-alikes that you're gonna find in the spring here in the Pacific Northwest. So that is the oyster mushroom or Pleurotus ostreatus. The mushroom that makes number three on our list of easy mushrooms to identify here in the Pacific Northwest is gonna be the shaggy parasol. Now this is also known as Chlorophyllum oliverii or Chlorophyllum racodes, and this is a delicious wild edible mushroom and it's uh, also known as the parasol mushroom and so it's got some identifying characteristics. It's got a very shaggy looking cap on it. They grow to about eight inches around and when they're young it just looks like a cake pop. It looks like a ball on a stick. When they open up it leaves a ring behind on the stem and this ring you can actually slide up and down the stipe of the mushroom. Another really distinguishing feature of this mushroom is that when you break the stem on it it's going to stain red. If you've got the ring that slides up and down, the shaggy cap, and then it stains red inside, I would be willing to bet that you have found yourself Chlorophyllum racodes or Chlorophyllum oliverii, you have found yourself the shaggy parasol mushroom. This one goes delicious with steak. Don't be alarmed when you slice it up and it stains red. Put it in the pan, the red, the red actually goes away from it. 
and it is one of the most nutty, delicious mushrooms. These shaggy parasols, they do not have a mycorrhizal relationship. They're known as saprobic mushrooms and they're gonna be growing just in the leaf duff on the ground. They don't necessarily need trees to grow with. Um, in fact, they don't have any known mycorrhizal trees that they have any relationship with. The shaggy parasol, you can find these on the edges of the forest, kind of near meadows growing in grass, and they usually grow in large troops, big, big patches of them. So pick them quick and eat them fast because they kind of don't last very long. Moving on to mushroom number four, that's the easiest to identify you can find in the forest here in the Pacific Northwest. And we're gonna talk about the king bolete or the porcini mushroom. This is definitely one of my favorite edible wild mushrooms out here in the forest. Boletus edulis, or the king bolete, the porcini. They're also known as a sep or a penny bun in Europe. They're popular all over the world. Famous chefs love to cook with these. You can find these in the Pike Place Market going for $50 a pound. One of the big identifiers of a King Bolete is going to be it has a very large cap on a mature specimen. The cap on a mature specimen can grow 15 inches around, but the prime ones are probably only five or four or five inches around. The insects also love these mushrooms, so try to beat the bugs to these mushrooms. Now, if you look underneath the cap of one of these mushrooms, it does not have gills, it does not have veins, it has what's called a pore surface. So underneath that mushroom, it looks a bit like a sponge. And if you look close, you can see really tiny little pinholes all through it. When they're young, the sponge underneath is gonna be just a really creamy white color. And as they get older, they kind of tend to get brown. And by that time, you can almost bet that bugs and larvae have riddled through it. Another identifying characteristic of the Boletus edulis that grows here in the Pacific Northwest is gonna be reticulation on the stipe. So the stem of the mushroom, also called the stipe, is gonna have something that looks a little bit like webbing or netting around it. It almost, it almost looks like fibers of hair that are making a netting on the outside of it. That's called reticulation. Also, the cap has the color of toasted bread or the outside of freshly baked loaf of bread. And I think that's why they call it the penny bun. Not completely sure about that. Put it in the comments if you know the real reason. But it looks like a loaf, a small loaf of bread to me. And when you flip it over, it'll be beautiful white underneath. And then you've got that kind of creamy colored stipe with the reticulation and you've got that pore surface and it's large and it's heavy. That is the cream of the crop. That is the porcini mushroom. That's a really good one to take home to the dinner table. Number five, another common one that people just really can't get enough of. I also love this mushroom and love to forage for them. Although I find them a little bit harder to find here on the west side of the Cascade Divide of Washington State or Oregon and that is known as the Morcella species or the morel. The morel mushroom is hugely popular. They sell it commercially. There's commercial pickers that go out to find these mushrooms. They can be found in large amounts growing in burned areas where a forest fire had burned through the year before. And what happens is these mushrooms have a mycorrhizal relationship to the trees, just like the Boletus edulis does, just like the chanterelle does. They need these trees to grow. So when the tree catches fire, it actually sends a signal through the roots into the mycelium, the, fruit, the body of the mushroom, and it tells the morels, it is time to produce some fruit. We need to spore out, spread our spore, and we need to move to new trees, live trees. So they do this desperate attempt to spread their seed, and that's when they grow, pop up by the thousands on these burned areas. These are really, really good table mushrooms. They look a little bit like a sponge. They've got a bunch of little holes all through it. When you cut it open, the cap and the stipe are gonna be one piece. There's no separation between the cap and the stipe. Also, when you cut it open, it's gonna be hollow inside the stem. These mushrooms like to grow on the eastern slopes of Washington State. Uh, they grow at uh, pretty high elevations and they'll start growing mid-April and they usually go through the beginning of June here in Washington State. And as the temperature gets higher, the mushrooms go up in elevation. There's several types of false morels, but a true morcella is gonna have that hollow stem. It's gonna have that very unique holes in the cap sponge looking deal going on. When you get your hands on some morels, they are one of the most delicious mushrooms that you can find. So anyways, thanks for watching Mushroom Wonderland. Aaron Hilliard, Mushroom Wonderland, please subscribe. Have a good day.